Hi, and welcome to this guide to the Secondary Maths Skills Workbook. This is the workbook that most of our Year 10 to 11 maths pupils and tutors will be working from. We do also have a Secondary Maths Exam Workbook, which some Year 11 pupils may move on to if they've already been having tutoring with us for some time. That exam workbook will be covered in a separate video. Do ask your programme coordinator if you have any questions about which workbook you should be using with your pupils. So this is what the workbook looks like. After the contents pages, um, there is a guide for tutors. Please do read through this guide. There's lots of helpful information about how to use the workbook and how the content links to the GCSE exams. Here are the stages of a maths tutoring session. And I'll now tell you where you can find the content for each part of the session in your workbook. And I'll keep coming back to this diagram for reference as I go. So after you've checked in with pupils and asked how their day and their week has been, you'll move on to a warm up activity. And these are at the start of the workbook. Stick to around 10 minutes for this and don't worry if pupils don't finish every question. Here's what that looks like. And if you need a reminder of any calculation methods pupils may be using, um, for example, if you want to brush up on the bus stop method of division, we do have a maths methods leaflet on the Loop website. If you want to check out this leaflet, you can find it in the Bright Ideas Maths Misconceptions training on Loop. Coming back to those stages of the session, um, after the warm up, you'll spend a few minutes asking pupils what they remember from the last session, perhaps revisiting just one or two questions that you did last session. And then you'll move on to main activities and you have a couple of options for this depending on your pupils needs. If pupils struggled with the warm up, you have the option to choose a warm up further practice topic to build on those skills and practice them. In the workbook, these can be found straight after the warm up exercises. If pupils seemed OK with the warm up, then you can move on to a pathway topic or essential topic. Pathway topics are more transferable math skills, so we recommend that in your earlier sessions you start off with these. And essential topics are less transferable math skills, but still ones that come up a lot in the exam. You can change the order of the topics depending on pupils' needs. There's more information about the difference between pathway and essential topics in the introduction section of the tutor workbook. Main activities contain four main types of questions. Each topic will start with a diagnostic question, which you'll briefly discuss with pupils. Then there'll be a tutor worked example. This is for you to demonstrate your method to pupils. There'll then be your turn questions for pupils to use that tutor worked example to have a go at similar questions themselves. And finally, there'll be some work independently questions. I'll show you some examples of each one. So looking at a topic um, from the workbook, you can see it starts with a diagnostic question, as mentioned, and this is a question to diagnose what problems pupils might be having with the topic or whether they're already strong in the topic. It's just for a brief discussion. So for these questions, imagine yourself as a kind of Dr. Maths and you're using this question to start to gauge pupils prior knowledge and confidence and any misconceptions they might have. So invite pupils to have a go at the question and in your tutor workbook it will say um, which is the correct answer and it will also say what kind of misconception might have led to another answer. If pupils get this wrong or they're unsure that's totally fine, um, don't go through the question in too much detail, just kind of use it to inform what misconceptions um, pupils might have and then go on to the next step of the tutor worked example.
So you can see a tutor worked example here. And this is where you, the tutor, demonstrate the math steps needed to solve a problem. So do make sure that you write down your working for this step by step. And one top tip is to avoid speaking and writing at the same time. So a way to do this is to tell pupils to watch you um, write down the first step of your working. And then ask pupils to consider what did I just do and why? And then write down the next step of your working in silence and then repeat the process of asking pupils what you did and why. Then there'll be a your turn question. This is for pupils um, to look back at what you did for the tutor worked example and emulate it to try a question for themselves. Um, so get pupils to have a go at that, ask them how they did it if appropriate. And then there'll be um, some working independently um, questions. And for year 10 to 11 maths, there are three types of working independently questions. So first there are intelligent practice questions. This is a sequence of questions um, where one question only varies slightly from the question before. So a great thing to encourage pupils to do here is to have a go at question one and then you can invite them to um, predict the answer to question two based on the answer to question one. Then get them to check their answer for question two and um, see if their prediction was correct or if not why. And they can use this process to kind of um, complete the questions more efficiently and kind of uh, check their understanding as they go along. For some topics, um, after the intelligent practice, you'll see purposeful practice questions. These are more strategic multi-step questions. Um, so still on the same topic as the intelligent practice, but um, requiring pupils to sort of apply that process um, in a slightly more um, complex and strategic way. And then sometimes there will be same surface, different deep questions towards the end of a topic. These are four questions which look similar. They have similar question wording, but they require different maths to solve. And the idea here is for pupils to identify which question uses the skill from the topic they've just been covering. So you can see that in the instructions there. Um, so for example, for this topic, pupils have been looking at converting a fraction to a percentage. Um, so in this same surface, different deep, um, you would um, invite pupils to look at which of the questions um, requires that skill. And once they've identified which question that is, um, ask them to have a go at that question. And then um, if they have managed to solve that question, um, then the next kind of challenge is for them to see if they can identify what is required for the other three questions and have a go at solving those two. Lastly, do finish off your session with a quick plenary activity for pupils to reflect on what they've learned. Um, this can be as simple as asking pupils these two questions for the last five minutes or so of the session. I hope you found that quick guide useful and thank you so much for tutoring with us.